In the Bible, temporal salvation is often a rescue from such circumstances as enemy attack, slavery, calamity, and sickness. Eternal salvation is deliverance from death and hell. Eternal salvation is often referred to as saving souls, and we have a part to play. Save some by snatching them from the fire. Fearing God, have mercy on some. Hating even the clothing contaminated by their sinful urges. What about those who refuse salvation or hide from the things of God? So if we refuse this great way of being saved, how can we hope to escape? The Lord himself was the first to tell about it. And people who heard the message proved to us that it was true. Eternal salvation involves calling on the name of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Are you saved? That's a question sometimes asked by naive Christians. Christians who know their Bibles well might reply, I am saved, am being saved and will be saved. So what is the way of being saved? The simple answer is Jesus. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. What about other religions? In an inclusive world, is Jesus really so exclusive? There is salvation in no one else, for there's no other name under heaven that's been given among mankind by which we must be saved. Is being unashamed to confess our faith publicly relevant? If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. Is obedience to Jesus important for eternal salvation? And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation to all them that obey him. How is God's word involved in salvation? Therefore, with humility, set aside all moral filth and the growth of wickedness and welcome the word planted deep inside you, the very word that's able to save you. What about doctrines that developed after the time of Jesus and the apostles? Are they important? Is any particular church tradition more important than another? Or do the teachings of Jesus and the apostles take primacy in our faith? Beloved, while I was making every effort to write you about our common salvation, I felt the necessity to write to you appealing that you contend earnestly for the faith that was once for all time handed down to the saints. Salvation is based upon faith, a gift from God, and the teachings of Jesus and the apostles as laid out in Holy Scripture. No church is perfect, but one that teaches from the Bible is better a church that actually believes and seeks to obey the Bible is best. The more we know our Bibles, the easier it is to filter out man-made ideas and ancient or modern traditions that neither Jesus nor the apostles taught. The best source for the faith once for all handed down to the saints is found in the most reliable collection of ancient documents in human history, the Bible. Will you have a change of heart and mind and believe the good news of salvation in God's reign? You decide.